Mm, 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 mm. You guys, this is so good. I have to share this with you. This is an immunity soup. And I literally opened the door today and this was delivered to me like three bowls of it. It is so good. It's basically lentil and veg vegetable. It's all plant-based with turmeric and it's like an immunity soup to boost my immunity during this time. And I have to tell you, I am so blessed because it was hand delivered to me, already made by a very sexy chef. Do <sighs> you guys wanna meet him? Anyway, we gotta go meet my friend Darren E. Scott, he's an actor. He's been in a lot of stuff that you probably have seen. And he has his own company of making healthy food and delivering it to your door. So like, if you want to be as lucky as me, you gotta just check this out. Let's go to his kitchen right now. He's in Vancouver. So for all y'all who want some food. Darren, oh my gosh, is this your kitchen? Can I see your t-shirt? Let's take a look at your t-shirt. Got to eat meals. What's the yep. X? What's the X? Oh my God, that's so cool. Got to eat me. You gotta oh, that's just a knife and a fork. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You've even got a hat and gloves. Oh well, we have to be really careful these days now with uh, COVID-19 going on. So we've got to be extra careful and diligent with everything we do now. That's really good. Yeah, that's great. So, can we take a look at your kitchen? I want to. I want to see this. Like so fancy. Well, I'll take you for a quick tour of with what I can do here. This is the cooking station we're going to be working at oh today, gosh. and I'll show you what we've prepped today. Uh, that's all the ingredients for our vegan ginger veggie soup. Oh my so gosh! Got Yum. Lentil, got chopped up vegetables. We got ginger, which is the key ingredients. Onions, garlic. Oh wow. Oregano, thyme, basil, salt, pepper, turmeric, and of course our organic vegetable stock. So that's what we're going to be cooking today. Um, wow. The, that's the station where we cook, and then uh, it's all cleaned up now, but this is where we do all of our prep. Wow, look at this kitchen. This is like dreamland for people. Oh, this place is huge. Up. It's a <laughs> nice commissary space, nice community where uh, there's other food uh, groups here that. Uh, do all sorts of prep or uh, food products that they sell. So it's a nice community and uh, we all get along really well. Wow, wow, I can't even imagine. Okay. Uh, it's not so bad, it's not so bad. It's uh, never quiet here and you never get lonely, so it's good. Oh, should I hang out there then? <laughs> 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 Maybe I should become a chef because I'm lonely. Yeah, we're all lonely right now. I know, I know. So, um, okay, so you're gonna cook the immune immunity soup, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a great immune booster, you know, uh, the, the key ingredient, of course, is the ginger. Uh, mm -hmm. We all know that ginger is very essential for our immune system, especially when we're sick or we're trying to keep our immune system in check before we do catch anything, because the better our immune system, of course, the better we have, better chance we have of fighting a cold. All right, so should we start? And I'll make my immunity, my, I mean, obviously, I'm not so fancy. I, I don't think I can make that. So I'm going to make my immunity <laughs> drink. <laughs> All right. So let's start. I'm just going to, like, grab what I consider my immunity, which, obviously, there's a reason I'm not a chef. Wait, is it cooked already? So the, no, this is... This is this is lemon water that I squeeze by myself. Okay. Um, and so that's really high in vitamin C. And then I've got like organic um, apple cider uh, and ginger with uh, turmeric. Nice. So that's my immunity along with um, this. So I just like pop one of these things in the morning. So you just attach that to a syringe and just inject it in yourself or what? That's exactly it. I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I do every day. <laughs> um, so let's both start making our food together. Yeah, I don't know if you can see my pot or not. I can see your pot. Yeah, I can see your pot. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Obviously, I'm gonna- I, I, I love cooking with gas, by the way. Why? Can, like, is it better? Because mine is- uh, Just things heat up faster. You get a better product when you cook, you know? I mean, with electric, you gotta sit there. You gotta wait for it to heat up. You're waiting, you're yeah. waiting, you're waiting with gas. Like, yeah. I think it up right away, that's what I like about it. It's actually so, good. I'm gonna toss the garlic and the ginger in first. 
Those two are very key. Oh my gosh. I wish I could have some. Now the vegetables we got here actually, uh, we got a bit of broccoli, uh, asparagus, uh, carrots, and red peppers, along with some onions. Um, but what's great about the soup is that you can actually, let's say you buy some asparagus for the week, and then you can, uh, you know how you break off the ends of the asparagus because they're not very edible? So you can break them off and then you can actually fine dice them and actually throw them into a soup like this. That's, that's just so mm -hmm. great about a soup like this. It's actually mm -hmm. great if you have a bunch of vegetables that are about to expire. You don't want to waste them. Yeah, that's and, a good uh, idea. Yeah. Kind of like making a stew almost. So I'm just going to put maybe like two, two tablespoons of this inside. Turmeric is really good for inflammation. And, um, you know, we always have inflammation issues. Yeah. So if you're indoors, you're not really doing as much exercise as normal. Ooh. Gosh. There goes the onions. Wow. I also prefer red onions because the flavor is better. I, I feel sort of like I should add stuff to this just so that I can be like you. I don't know what I can add to this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to set this aside. And then we'll have our little shot later together. Do you have to put that in a martini shaker? Oh my gosh, I wish I had some, but I honestly, I don't have any alcohol. Can you believe yeah, actually, we'll drop one off at your house. I know, can you please drop me off one? I'm going crazy. I have no alcohol. Like I literally lived off one bottle of wine for four weeks. I drank like a quarter every week rationing it because I was like, who knows when I'm going to get the next hit. And the last glass I had was when we were on the phone the other night. Yeah. And then, and then I was like, <laughs> yeah, the bottle. it's so sad. Look at and then, and then like, I'm supposed to recycle, right? But like I have a yeah. little left, so I don't want to recycle just yet, just in case I want this last drop in my mouth. Yeah. Just in case. So do you time it by yourself or do you- Well, like you want to cook the uh, onions and the garlic and the baby it's a little bit translucent, a little bit cooked, if you want to get a bit of the aroma going. Yeah. You don't want to just throw it in and store everything in. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Because those are the key uh, flavor ingredients in the soup. So you want to make sure that you get the aroma going first. Yum. So um, you use vegetable stock because most people like are vegetarians who order it. Or is there a reason? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. We right. have to be a little bit careful sometimes because uh, we have a customers and clients that have actually have carrot, carrot allergies of all things. So, carrot? Uh, a lot of vegetable stock has carrot in it. Oh. But, um, generally, I, we do check with our clients and if, uh, if it's just carrot and the veg stock, it's usually mm -hmm. okay. But if there's actual carrots in the soup, like in the case we have carrots in the soup, we would have to make a separate batch for them. Wow. Basically. Wow, you yeah. know people, people are allergic to carrots? Yeah, people have carrot allergies, believe it or not, yeah. Um, so, wow. okay. skin irritation, okay. rash, um, breaking out a bit of hives apparently sometimes. No way, I did, I've never heard of that actually. What yeah, about a lot of people come into us with food allergies actually, so. Some people don't like onions though, right? Onions are usually okay, it's just people don't like onions for, you know, gastro reasons or that gives them gas or something like that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna throw all the vegetables in here. I don't know how much of this you can see, but. Wow, yum, okay. That's the asparagus. That's asparagus going in. Is that tomato? Uh, no, that's red pepper. Oh, red pepper, okay. Yeah, red pepper, thrown in the carrots. Well, in this case, we're using broccoli stems because broccoli stems are actually the most flavorful part, so. I love broccoli stems. They're so delicious. I'm going to waste them, you know, because they just I want know. to eat the part. But you know what? It's like the best part. It's also crunchy. So like if you actually chop it up really fine, you can make it like as if it's rice. You know, it's funny, like when I was a kid, you know, because most kids, when you're growing up, you don't like eating vegetables. But when my parents would make broccoli, I would just fool myself and think that the broccoli was like a, the flour, florette part was like a ground beef almost. But that's the only part of the broccoli I would eat, so I'd eat that and I just put it back in my plate. <laughs> so I just eat, eat, eat all the, the crown part of the broccoli, and that's it. So. And here we are, ironically. Yeah. <laughs> so 
are you one that have really like really fine dice as well oh my gosh did you chop that that up yourself yeah yeah i chopped it all up before we uh started oh. it I'm oh. not gonna bore you with my chopping skills, so. Right, right, yeah. I mean, they're fast and accurate and efficient, but I don't want to bore you with it anyways. Well, I mean, I, I would love to see you chop, and then I would pour my apple cider slower, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. That's where FX and Diabetes comes in, and they slow pour. Yeah. I should have made my lemon water like in front while you were cooking. Wait, is that the fridge? Yeah, it's pretty crazy in here. This is a fridge. Things chill pretty fast in here. That's is that the fridge? The fridge? Yeah. Oh my gosh! This that's is the fridge? That's another lane. That's like the biggest fridge. I was like imagining a bigger, like... There's another lane. There's another lane. That is a... Yeah, that's the fridge. Dude, like that's the place I would run to if we ever run out of food. I'd go hide there. Yeah, it could, it could happen during an apocalypse. And we'll start raiding this place, probably. Oh my God, <laughs> please, can I have the keys? So um, so if someone was not vegetarian and they wanted to make an immunity soup um, and they didn't want to have vegetarian, like how would you replace it? Would it be good? You mean meat? Yeah, like a non-vegetarian. Uh, you can use tofu, you can use tempeh, like I said. Uh, soy curls are, are a great option. I haven't actually worked with them yet, but... Uh, I heard a great thing about soy curls. They're actually a great meat substitute as well. No, I mean like if someone wanted to have like a meat soup, would you exchange a vegetable broth with like beef broth or something? Or uh, we broth? generally we generally don't because we keep the, the soup base uh, we keep the soup based vegetable. Okay. For all of them, and then oh. that way we have the alternative of making it vegan or vegetarian for people or uh, or uh, with, with I meat. See. Okay. But generally, the topping is usually either chicken or it can be tofu or tempeh usually. One of, the, one of the guys in here actually makes his own stock from scratch, so we buy from him sometimes. Wow. Ooh, it's really orange. Like, that's a lot of carrots. It's really orange. It looks really fresh. So how long have you been doing this? This is so neat. Like, this is like the best time for your kind of business, like making food for other people. Um, um, we've been in business for about five years. Wow. So get an angle here. It looks so good. Yeah, so I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna let this simmer for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's good. I prefer rubbing that on my skin, actually. Really? Do you yeah, really coconut oil. Can I see it? Can we all see it? We'd love what? to see, watch you rub coconut oil on your skin. Yeah, no, that's a different channel. <laughs> but when you cook for a living, you know, it's kind of hard just to go home and cook for yourself after. Yeah, I know. I mean, I can't. Like being a massage therapist, you know, everyone thinks you date a married massage therapist. You got it good. And everyone's like, well, no. Because, you know, whoever I'm married to comes home, the last thing they want to do is give me a massage <laughs> because they're going to do it all day. What? But what did you kind of the same thing as being a chef, I guess. Or yeah, or it, it is true, actually. So did, did you date a massage therapist? Like, I'm not sure why. No, no. I just know a lot of people who are married to them or dated them. Oh, okay. okay. Where I was like, man, you, you must have it good. You know, you must get free massages all the time. Like, no, dude, like the last thing my wife or girlfriend wants to do when she gets home is getting a massage. She probably wants a massage for herself. Yeah. She probably- yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that men who cook are super sexy and hot. Like for some reason when they're cooking, they can be like not interesting at all. But as soon as they're cooking, you're just like, you're really hot. Like there's something about you that's special. And then when you eat their food. <laughs> yeah. And then we we'll got to eat a commercial break. I don't know. And then a uh... commercial break. Okay. Yeah. We, should we do a commercial for them? <laughs> All mold, soft oh. hands. All you do dishes. Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Is it solid? Yeah, it's solid right now. Let's touch it. But we're about to blend it. Whoa! That thing is like magical. Oh my gosh. So you want to, depends on how you like it. Some people like a little chunks in it, so, um, but we prefer to have as blended as possible. That thing is so powerful. And you can see as it blends, the colors really start to come out too, which is really nice. Oh my gosh, that looks so delicious. It I can is delicious. taste it. Good. I can taste, I can taste the lentil and the coconut in my mouth and like, it's just like thick. And well, you will taste it cause I'll just uh, pack one up and just drop it off at your door. Ah! <laughs> yeah.
I'm gonna throw this out now. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that delivery. That's not what we do. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, yo, everybody, you better order from this guy. You get to see his sexiness <laughs> as well as get good food. All right, let's take a look at your apartment. Um. Or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <can't> <laughs> <laughs> wow, you look so sexy. You're wearing your Under Armour. I'm also wearing Under Armour. I'm an Under Armour freak. I wear nothing else. So. Me too. Me too. This is, this is all Under Armour. If they made jeans, I would buy them. Oh, me too. Me yeah. Too. Yeah. The only thing is, I'm not sure about their shoes, but like everything else, I love, like their workout clothes is literally the best. Like, their shoes are hit and miss, but uh, the workout shoes tend to be pretty good. Um, their combat boots are really good. Their tactical boots are really good. I like their light. I've never, I've never even seen those. Okay. Yeah. So. But yeah, I love their armor. Like their shirts. I love their shirts. Like they're, it's like really solid. I can't wear anything else to be honest. Yeah, me too. I love their sweats as well. Oh my gosh, me too. I know. I bum out in them. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Um, we all know you're very, very, um, in shape. So, do you want to? Oh my god! <laughs> okay, are we doing this? Okay, let me show you my. Damn it! Okay, this is embarrassing. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my shirt on. Maybe. I'm not here to embarrass you. So. Okay. Well, I think I'm just gonna keep my I'm shirt. I'm here to help you create content. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Let's take off your shirt then. This is content. Okay. Um, so, so, okay. Do you want to, let's do like, let's take a quick workout. What, like show us some moves. I'll do it with you that you can teach people to keep in shape. Um, well, I find that when I'm really limited, like I don't have a gym to go to, I, I'll try to make use of the furniture I have. Okay. If cool. that makes any sense. Wish we can fly. If you were a superhero, who would you be? I was gonna say Batman. I love Batman. He has those superpowers, you know. But Batman is really awesome. He's human, and he just has a lot of cool shit. <laughs> I know. I love his stuff. It's his tech. Is his tech is awesome. Yeah. It's really cool, and I really like his character as well. Like. Yeah. 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 Batman's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just a Batman person. I I guess Iron Man too. Iron Man has a lot of cool shit as well. <laughs> you gotta give me Marvel. If you're gonna give me Marvel, give me Iron Man. If you're gonna give me DC, give me Batman. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm much about superpowers. I think I'm just, like just about the cool shit. <laughs> I do. I really. I know. I. I wonder if Batman's like high tech stuff is actually in, existent in the world. Like, you know, he's- I'm sure some of it exists. You think so? Yeah. I mean, I think it's really cool. Like yeah. his wings that he creates and then he flies off. I mean, dude, if we had that and that was something you can buy on like Amazon, can you imagine? 
can you imagine how fun that be? You and I, we could be taking those wings and we'd be flying to a rooftop and hanging out, but like still socially like distance, you know, but we'd be like having a beer on the rooftop because we can fly there. Oh, here's something I do in my kitchen that I read about a while ago. What is that? That's an onion. Why is it that important? I read an article a while ago, uh, quite a few years back, and talked about how, uh, like, what they say that when you cut an onion, you have to make sure you use it right away because if you don't, and even if you wrap it in like saran wrap, it will absorb a lot of bacteria. Really? Viruses. So apparently, people use it during the period of like the bubonic plague, and. Uh, a lot of people actually kept it in their apartments or their flats actually didn't get it because the, the onion soaked up the virus. Because what they did is they put the onion under like a microscope after and, and analyzed it and they found like all the bacteria and viruses within the onion. Oh my gosh. So you can't eat that onion anymore. So yeah, that's what I do. I just leave it. I mean, it smells a bit onionish around my apartment, but hey. What if it's getting sick? If it stops me from getting sick, who cares? Oh. But it's also apparently a pretty handy thing to do, like during like flu season. Wow, that's I, that's I've never heard of that. I heard of somebody saying you put like onion in your ear. And to what? Put onions in your ear. Have you ever heard of that? Man, that would be a shitty day if you were just like trying to kiss their ear and stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, well, it's gonna be a shitty day for the person who has an onion in their ear. It's kind of rough. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried this cleaner? No. Is it is it really good? No, it's really cool. Uh, I went to Canadian Tire because uh, my mom was asking if I could try to find her a Lysol spray, um, which is hard to find, but Canadian Tire said that it had it on stock on the, uh, on the internet. So got up early, went there, got there, and they didn't have it, obviously. And then this uh, woman came up to me. She's like, hey, I noticed you were booting yourself over to the... Uh, <laughs> clean out of the cleaners and she says i want you to know about this you can get this over at the uh, automotive section of canadian tire and it's uh, an industrial cleaner uh mm -hmm. heavy duty industrial cleaner cuts through grease and everything and apparently it kills a ton of viruses including a lot of stds like chlamydia fa b c are you kidding me herpes uh and even hiv apparently oh is this a joke no it's not a joke this is real so, Wait. How but nobody knows about this because nobody goes to the automotive section of Canadian Tire. They go to the cleaner section where all the cleaners are. Can I see this? Close up? Yeah. What do you mean it kills STDs? Like you spray it on somebody's like genitals? Well, I won't go that far, but yeah, it's just... How does it kill STDs then? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. How it works? But uh, Costco's starting to sell these in three packs now too, so... No way! Oh my it's god! It's still, I think, a best kept secret right now. So it's okay, like cool. kind of crap. Yeah, okay. so. But they only sell it at Canadian Tire. I don't know. I'm not gonna put it on my genitals. So. Dude, I what do you? Who said that this like cures HIV? No, it says back. You're kidding me! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. I have to laugh because it's like. First of all, like, you're going to spray your blood? Yeah. I don't know. Is it drinkable? Dude, I have no idea. You just have an experiment. Yeah. It kills HIV. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> no, what does that even mean? It's so funny. <laughs> Ooh, I got my mask from China today. Congratulations. How many did you get? Yeah, this one. Whoa. Yeah. Reflective light. You have two, two, is this for oxygen? It's a, uh, it's called like a cycling mask, like cycling pollution mask. Like if you do a lot of biking. That's really uh, cool. It just helps uh, with breathing. You don't inhale a lot of the pollutants or supposedly any viruses out there. You look really good with it actually. It's not bad actually. And it's washable, it's reusable. It's better than buying like a, it's better than buying like a bunch of, you know, N95s that, you know, frontline workers need, so. Mm. 
That's this is good enough, I think. Oh, by the way, is that Peepaw Girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. I love that. I love that you have it. It's amazing. That's the best. This is awesome shit. That's the best. Where did you get it? I need one. Uh, any Chinese store, any Chinese grocery has them. Oh, my gosh. You have a Peepaw Girl. I haven't seen that for months. You can even get it in uh, TNT, I'm sure. Yeah, I haven't really gone. I only try to go do my as close as possible um, because I don't want to take public transportation. Yeah. Um, but Pipa Gao is the best. Cheers. There's a soup. Oh my gosh, it looks really good. Is that is there curry there? No, it's just that's a, a turmeric. I'm so. That's jealous. a turmeric giving its color and then. Uh, the um Where's my... I'm drinking turmeric too. Are you drinking turmeric? There's turmeric on the bottom. What in your syringe thing there? Yes. This is my drink of the day. Ho oh, ho <laughs> I just I just never use it. Probably I probably should use it more than I should, but Tiger Bomb is a really great invention, actually. It like, is. They've, they've modified it and have like versions of it. Yeah. And Tiger Bomb is still the best and it's the cheapest. I remember when I was a not a kid, but probably a teenager, and like I remember my mom would use Tiger Bomb on me as a kid and like rubbed it on my chest, mm -hmm. put a little bit underneath my nose so I could smell it. Oh, that's right. I remember. But when I was a teenager, I had a I had a bottle of the red one. And that was really, really strong. It did. And I put it, I put it under my nose, and it burned. Oh, wait, is it the uh, one? Is it the one that's dark? Or just the red one. I don't, I don't know, but it's the one that's the. I think it's, it's the strongest. But I put it, I put it under my nose, and it burned. So I had like this Charlie Chaplin <laughs> mark, basically mustache, underneath my nose for a while because it oh. burned so bad. It was crazy. So cheers. Cheers. Bon appetit. Yeah. Okay. One best thing about the soup is that it tastes better as the days go by. It does look good. Yeah. Well, that personal batch I made today, I can bring you some, so. Thank you. I could do it again tomorrow anyway, so. <laughs> We always try to make it fresh for people, but this is actually, like I said, one of the rare dishes that it actually tastes better as the days go by. It's like a stew as well, or curry, you know? Yeah, I'm just rolling. Don't worry about me, you know? <laughs> just don't, don't even, don't, don't consider me, you know? I'm obviously looking at it and really hungry and jealous, but don't worry, I'm okay. <laughs> put frames and stare at you. Oh, there you are, with your glitter top. I'm just gonna drink this. It's so delicious. This apple cider is so good. <laughs> so good. You want to do a shot with me? Yeah, that's not fair. What do I have? A freaking like turmeric, blah, blah. They have vodka. Huh? Well, they have vodka still. I don't have vodka. You have Chinese cooking wine? That's gross. Ew. <laughs> what the hell? No. Um, let me think what I have. Okay, I'm gonna go check. I'll be right back. Okay. The wine? I don't I drank that bottle of wine. I have to go look in the cellar to see if there's another bottle of wine. It doesn't belong to me. I don't know if it's too old to drink. Would would wine they had the rats for me? Huh? They had the rats for me. I'm kidding. You are awful. Okay, yeah, you know, we should have a glass of wine or something. Karen? Yeah. Okay, so this wine is like really old because, because like the cork broke halfway. I don't know how to fix it. Do you know how to fix this? Uh. It, it's so old, like, and, and and I took half the cork in and it just broke apart. How do I? Did you, did you not screw it in all the way? I did, but as soon as I screwed it in, chunks started coming out. How do I? Oh shit! 
Dude, this is, this is like a real, why is it like that? Oh my gosh. I think it's really old. Um, Cause he doesn't what? even have a label. Look at this. This is how what sketchy- What year is it? Does it say? Dude, no, it, look how sketchy this is. This is a bottle. It's um. Is that a homebrew? <laughs> oh my gosh, 1996. Okay, either this is a very expensive oh, wine I shouldn't have opened it. Or I just like. Well, you're halfway there. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know what to do. How do I get rid? Of, how do I do this? Good question. Are you looking it up right now? Yeah. You're so bad. Because you probably don't have the tool for the second one. No, I don't. And also, this cork is really, it's just really broken. It's not solid anymore. Does that make sense? Like, like, anyway, I'll call it. I'm to say it shredded in, it shredded into pieces in the wine. I use a coffee filter and then I okay. put it into the glass with the coffee filter. Perfect. It was like a huge mess now that I cleaned the kitchen and now it's mess messy and disgusting. There's pork all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I really hope I don't die from this wine because it looks like my Well, how's it taste? I haven't tasted it. I'm waiting for cheers. Oh. Cheers. Cheers to life and living. Yeah. Cheers. What is that? Why does it taste like Does it taste like vinegar? No. It tastes a little bit quirky. <laughs> but it's actually not that bad. I mean, this is better than nothing. What kind of red that. is it? I have no idea. It's from it's it's from USA. It's, so it's probably Oh, Cap Sav? Yes, yes, Cap Sav, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Do that cork disintegrated. <laughs> like literally disintegrated. I cannot believe it. 96, that's, fuck, that's almost 25 years. Oh my gosh. I'm drinking a 25 year old wine. Jesus. Oh wow, wow. I don't know where the time went. I mean, this wine is older than my time. I think somebody took an actual footage of a, a video they took in Costco of people <laughs> grabbing the toilet paper off the, the palace before they had this system like that they do now. <laughs> and they, slowed it, they slowed it down and then they added sound effects from like the walking dead of the zombies. <laughs> I want to see that video. I'll see if I can find for you. Dude, dude, it was funny. <gasps> because that's really what it is. It's like, it's so it's like slow motion, it's like <laughs> Grabbing a toilet paper, it's just, it's priceless. I love it, that's actually really funny. And you know what, that really is what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One thing I am impressed with is some smaller businesses that some smaller businesses are starting to learn to adapt. Yes, I love that. I love that they're doing that. Yeah. And you can tell when they do adapt, you know they're going to make it. They're, they're learning to, re to re reinvent themselves. Yes. Especially funny. like the, the local breweries that are uh, changing their, their factories into making hand sanitizer. That's incredible. I love that. That's really amazing. Yeah really amazing i mean but there are some businesses that are not and no but i mean that's just you know that's survival i mean i'm fortunate with my business because it's always been the way it is you order twice a week you get a bunch of meals you stock up your fridge and away you go you know well i, I feel like your business is really current actually it, it is and like unfortunately for restaurants i mean people yeah people can use uber eats and skip the dishes and all that, but it's only sustainable for so long if they yeah. have a, don't have a job. 
I, I don't I don't think it's sustainable. I have you know, CERB is that's not the kind of life where you kind of order out every day. No, it's actually very expensive. But reflecting, going back to what we talked about earlier too, the benefit of people staying home more is that they're actually starting to cook. Yes. And discover things about themselves. Yes. So that's that's important. Yes. A lot of people are cooking. Because the internet, um, the internet is so packed with, with recipes, you know. Yeah, so there's no there's no reason you can't learn how to cook now. There's no reason. Yeah. Because like I actually look like people from Kazakhstan. If you look them up, you'll see that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. I, like no, I, I totally see it. Yeah. So I kind of want to go there because I just want to. I just want to know what it feels like. What about people that feel like they can, that I can pretend that I'm I'm from there. Yeah. But just because you know I'm really good at it, I just want I just wanted that feeling of like, hey, and I've actually seen a lot of pictures of Kazakhstan. I don't even know how to call it Kazakhstani women. And like literally, like, whoa, we're the same ethnicity. Okay, yeah. Not, but maybe I am. Who knows, right? But it's, I, I, I want to be there just to like experience that. Well, in a sense, it, it kind of is. I mean, well, the thing is, so Kazakhstan is like a lot like from the Silk Road back in the day, you know, like all those Eurasians and things like that. Yeah. Right? And then they just kind of settled around, like in Xinjiang, and like. Um, Syria has some as well, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan. Yeah, yeah. And so I just sort of feel like that is calling me because, you know, to be really honest, I'm not, re I don't really feel like I belong like in China. Yeah. I identify as Chinese and I speak Chinese, but, and culturally I'm very Chinese, right? Yeah. But, there's like a deeper calling where it's kind of like I'm. There's something else too. You yeah. know what I, mean? I mean, you you know because we're both ethnically ambiguous and we're yeah. from like one thing. So sometimes it's like okay, I can't be great because it's multicultural and blah blah blah. But I also don't feel like I can completely relate to Canadians because that's also a culture. Yeah culture of being Canadian, you know what I mean? And I'm not exactly a Canadian because I didn't always live, right? So so it's like, and then, okay, Taiwan, where I was born. And so like, yeah, okay, there's a part of me that could be Taiwanese and blah, 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 but not really, not all, you know? So that's why I wanna go to, I wanna go to Kazakhstan just to be like, what would it be like if I'm sitting in a table in a restaurant, everybody looks like me, and I'm just like, not that unique look and i i want to be you know what i mean yeah just for a little bit does this sound weird no not at all yeah because we, we look so different like sometimes it'd be nice just to be like everyone else I don't yeah. Know. yeah like where would where would you go where would you look like i mean i've lived in japan before a lot of people thought i was japanese and japanese people yeah. thought i was japanese yeah, I could see that. Totally. Uh, totally see that. I think maybe Hawaii would feel some sort of connection. Hmm. Because the word hapa comes from Hawaii. Mm hmm So. And Hawaii is definitely a place I like to go to, too. Hawaii is really awesome. I don't mean, like, to surf and, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Do the regular shit. I mean, actually just go and try to embrace the culture you know totally have you ever been go, go visit some civilization that lives in a volcano or something like that you know what i mean but it's just <laughs> i'm gonna go collect some volcano rock <laughs> yeah. but you know what i mean just uh yeah embrace the culture i think i'm just travel wise it's all what i'm all about now is just embracing the culture yeah i totally get it party days are done you know it's just because it's the same every really ever. Yeah, it's, at the end of the day, it, it does get to be the same. Yeah. I wish I was a mermaid so that I could be friends with all of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was really random. <laughs> like, <laughs> <I'm> mind talking? 
Hey, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. I have no worries. I'm curious to see how it turns out. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.